Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor, and alongside me, as always, my co-host, Todd Hill. What's up, guys? Just a reminder, the video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we've chosen the 2014 film Godzilla. Ford Brody, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, a Navy bomb expert, has just reunited with his family in San Francisco when he is forced to go to Japan to help his estranged father, Joe, played by Brian Cranston. Soon, both men are swept up in an escalating crisis when Godzilla, king of the monsters, arises from the sea to combat malevolent adversaries that threaten the survival of humanity. The creatures leave colossal destruction in their wake as they make their way toward their final battleground, San Francisco. Godzilla was released on May 16, 2014. On a budget of $160 million, it made $524 million. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 76% and an audience score of 66%. So, Todd, let's discuss Godzilla. Spoilers are ahead. Okay. So, Todd, I'm going to throw it to you first. Where do you want to start off with Godzilla 2014? Uh, I did a little digging. Uh, okay. It's 16 years between Zilla 98 and this movie. Mm. Uh, in Math. that time, Toho released six of their own Godzilla movies. Right. Uh, this for, this uh, 2014 film, as you said, was pretty successful box office-wise, which kind of led them into creating their own monster burst because by now the Marvel Cinematic Universe is kicking ass and taking names, so everybody's got to have a verse of some kind. Everybody's got to have a universe, yeah, exactly. <laughs> monster verse for this uh, the Dark Pictures universe, remember that? Oh, no, because there's only one movie. That was The Mummy, The right? Mummy, yeah, yeah, exactly. It crashed and burned after the first one. Exactly. Uh, so w- what's your what's your history with this film, Todd? We saw it together, I know. We saw it together, yeah. Yeah, so... I had a plus one with me that night, if you remember. No, I don't. Yeah, she was with us. <laughs> you mean he? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> So Sorry. stopping recording right so, now. It's a, it's a e- some ass justice to be dealt out. <laughs> Speak. Ass and now he's going to say ass justice. <laughs> just say, like you there like. There was some <laughs> ass justice dealt out that night, too, I think. Oh, I'm Lord. sorry. It's easy jokes, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, Make my, fun of the old man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like a softball. I couldn't help it. <laughs> uh, I remember this being better. I Is it just too. me? I remember this being better than when I rewatched it. I was um, underwhelmed a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, I watched this uh, way before we watched Minus One. So right. I wasn't like Minus One had ruined this for me. No, no, I'd, I'd watched it before we went to see Minus One, yeah. Yeah, still, it was just, I, like you, I remember it being a little bit better than maybe I actually was. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, we watched Zilla 98. We both uh, have no affection for that film. We both think it's a pretty terrible film. Right. This is not a terrible film no. at all. It's not terrible um, at all. It's just, um, I don't know, I think the big problem with this one is um, it's it's the human characters to a point. Uh, we've talked about that in other Godzilla, you know, material that we've done now. But uh, let, let's let's kind of let's back up a little bit. So, you know, kind of to set the the, the picture, um, Brian Cranston, he runs a power plant. He runs a nuclear power plant, nu- a nuclear reactor, right? In uh, let's see, uh, Jinjira, uh, Jinjira. I think, I think you're correct. In yeah. Jinjira, you don't have no idea. I don't. You're correct. <laughs> In Jinjira, Japan. And so him, his wife, his son, they're all living there. And he's they've been detecting kind of some like a normal seismic activity, let's call it, right. around the power, the power plant. He's getting more and more power, paranoid. He's asking, you know, some of the higher-ups there, like, you know, we may have to shut this thing down. Some shit's going wrong. His wife also works there. He ends up at the very beginning of the film asking her going down to level five. Take a team down there. Yeah, check take it a out. team, see what's going on. Of course, as soon as she steps foot down there, all, all hell, hell breaks loose. All <laughs> hell breaks loose. The whole reactor, uh, you know, that's, there's something that's that's uh, around the reactor that's causing all this, as we'll come to learn. But the whole reactor basically has a meltdown. They try to shut it down, and then he does manage to get away. You know, they do manage to get away. But that's kind of our, our backdrop for everything that happens is is the kind of the, the drama with him. And then we kind of cut to uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. He's military man. <laughs> That's his whole character. He's military. I'm, I'm in the military. I'm in the military. That's military. his whole. Uh, he's actually in EOD, which is uh, ordnance disposal. Yeah, explosive ordnance disposal. That'll be key 
Yes. That'll be key. That'll come in handy later. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen is also in the picture (laughs) as nurse wife. Yep. Uh, underused, underutilized nurse wife. Very underutilized. I don't know why she's in this film. I know, right? I think she just saw a Godzilla, big budget Godzilla film. That could be good for my career. Probably could have if you were in the film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she maybe has two scenes, three scenes. She's not in a hell of a lot of it. Her no. biggest scene is throw is pawning off her kid to anybody that'll take him. <laughs> uh, Get one, him out of here. At one point, it's, it's, it's basically like her big scene there. She's just kind of around to be like, Ford, when you're coming home. I'm so scared. I'm so scared right now. Like, that's her whole thing. Right? Like, she works at the hospital. She's a nurse. Do we see her saving lives and, like, take him over there and I need an IV drip and all this? She's like, not really barking out any nurse orders like no, that. No, she's just, like, just there to be, like, his kind of, you know, his, she's nurse wife. And she's just there to give a little bit of exposition and to, to be scared. And uh, that's about it. Uh, so she's kind of underutilized. Like, this... It, it, this is it's like it's like a, a certain cutoff where this goes from like interesting human drama to I could give a fuck. It almost hijacks the entire movie. And that and the I give a f- I don't give a fuck anymore comes in as soon as Brian Cranston gets crushed under that bridge because <laughs> he's the only interesting character in the film. Right. He has motivation. He can't let go of what happened at the power plant. He knows there's more to the story. He's driven. He's, he's focused. driven to it. He lost his wife. He's kind of become estranged from his son because he can't let it go. He knows that it wasn't just. It wasn't as it seemed. He knows something's going on there. Stayed in echo location. Yeah, he thinks something's talking, mm-hmm. you know, the same way it was talking 15 years prior. Right. And he has motivation. As soon as he's out of the film, I don't care. It's like, pretty much just a military operation after that. Exactly. There's no heart. There's no soul. There's no, like, again, we've recently seen a, a Godzilla film with a lot of heart and a lot of soul. Exactly. And this has none of it. I don't care about ATJ. <laughs> I don't care about his military stuff. I don't care about anything that they're doing. None of it is interesting. I, again, Elizabeth Olsen's not really used at all. She doesn't really have a character or any kind of growth or anything. He doesn't have a character or any kind of growth. He's just there to be EOD guy right. to defuse a bomb later in the field. Right. Brian Cranston's character, Joe, was the only one that had real motivation and had had any kind of real interest in the story. Yeah. As soon as that bridge collapses, you that's gone. It. It's gone. You lost it. Um, so uh, give us our setup for uh, Ken Watanabe, Todd. So Dr. Shirazawa, tell us there's a scene at a dig site, basically. Tell us what happens yeah, they there. Kinda, they fly out there in a monarch chopper, him and his yeah. assistant. I don't remember her name. Uh, I have it here somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, Vivian. Right. Sally Hawkins. And they've kind of got called out there to uh, a dig site, as you say. Uh, they've kind of unearthed something. There's a, looks like a, a big kind of a... Looks like a kind of a claw almost type protruding thing. You're talking like, about the eggs or yeah, the, the egg looking thing? Yeah, so like sort they find claw like looking. a Yeah. They find like a it's like a, a giant fossil, like probably the size of Godzilla. Right. It's not Godzilla, but it was around uh you know, it's been around probably as as long as Godzilla. And they see those two kind of fossilized eggs. Yeah, they're kinda of like protrusions, yeah. They right. have like a kind of a point to them. Yeah. And one of them uh is it's kind ruptured. Of, yeah, one of them is hatched. Yeah. And the other one is is still kind of intact there pretty much. So the next thing we kind of see, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he he gets. They get a call. He's returned home. He gets a call on his on his return night that Joe Brian Cranston got arrested because he tried to go back to the the power plant and got arrested. So he hops on a flight to Japan to go bail him out of jail. Again, more kind of set up for that character about he kind of explains what's going on again. Like we talked about, he hears something talking, the seismic activity. That's he's it's, seeing now is kind of reminiscent. Again, like yeah, what happened to his family years ago? Exactly, and that and that kind of all sets up and kind of culminates with them going back into Jinjira. He discovers that it's not, it's not nuclear fallout. It's not a you know. They can not, take their masks yeah, off. They can fire. breathe the air. Like there's nothing going on there. Like someone is covering this up, which is I guess Monarch more than the government. And then they get arrested by not the government, but by Monarch. Monarch. And Monarch takes them back to their little facility they have set up at the. I, I, this is the rim. I guess it's the remnants of the power plant. Is it? I believe it was because they're yeah. just doing their shit out in the open. <laughs> They're like, nobody with a plane or chopper, hey, y'all see this big-ass fossilized <laughs> egg over here that's just out in the open air? Maybe it's a no-fly zone. I guess. I'm sure they're Monarch. I'm sure they've got the whole area locked down or something. But, I mean, they're just doing their stuff right there in the open. They're studying it. And, obviously, it's waking up. 
So it's it's doing its thing. It's waking up. All hell goes, you know, all hell breaks loose. Brian Cranston, as we say, he's up on a bridge. He gets killed. He gets killed. Crushed. And then there goes most of your movie. <laughs> there goes your motivation and stuff. And then from there, it's just it. your focus goes to Ford, which is Aaron Taylor Johnson. And it's, um, like you said, it pretty much becomes a military operation. The plan is to um, kind of... Uh, uh, well, I guess we should, before we go into the plan, let's let's talk about what hatches out of the egg. Is a MUTO. A MUTO. I can't remember what the acronym actually stands for. I actually, I actually for. wrote it down. Oh, what do you got? Look at me. Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organism. Oh, okay. MUTO. So the first one that hatches, we come to find out, is the male, mm-hmm. the smaller male with wings. And then we eventually find out that there are there is that other egg that they took where they took it to some mountain somewhere outside of Vegas. Well, they supposedly take all their nuclear waste. waste. Exactly. And that one hatches, which is a larger wingless female, but much larger than um, our male Muto. Right. And what are they wanting to do? A male? A and female? A female. They want to frit. <laughs> is, that what you, is that what you want to ask me? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that's that's pretty much the motive, the, motive, the motivation as we see uh, the see later. There's a couple of scenes too. I don't know. It it just bugged me. So like, um, and I thought the one where that one breaks out of that nuclear waste facility. That's the one that winds up traipsing through Vegas, right? Yes. What a blown waste of opportunity to show a little bit of Vegas destruction. You they see, just barely gloss over. You it. see it on the video monitors. It's that's a gag that's used a couple of times. You mm-hmm. you see fights and see things on like video monitors mm-hmm. and TV screens. You see it tear down that uh, the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know that's there. Yeah, another wasted opportunity. Um, but that one breaks out of the back of that. At the mountain. Right. Before, when they're looking for, there's a scene, actually, it's not before, it's later. There's a scene where they're looking for uh, a submarine that has that, I think it has the nuke on it or something, but it's it was thrown in Hawaii. They go to Hawaii, Hawaii later. But for my point here that I'm trying to make, that sub gets thrown up onto land in Hawaii, right? Mm-hmm. And they've got like three helicopters buzzing around, and they got a ground team. And they're like, oh, this thing is like 30 meters ahead of you. And there's like the helicopters above ground. And they get there, and you think it's like something small. It's a whole fucking submarine. <laughs> you telling me none of them three helicopters or anybody could have seen that from more than 30 meters back? Right. And that's also my problem with that one, because they send that whole team. It's like a special ops team, and they're racing through that nuclear waste facility in Vegas. And I'm like, okay, where is it? Where is where it? it? Where is it? Where is it? And there's helicopters flying around outside. Nobody saw the big fucking thing on the back of the mountain. Is that what you're telling me? The helicopter that's flying around that comes into that shot didn't see it from out they the back? They didn't see the whole back half of that facility gone? Exactly. Like, it's just little stuff like that. It's nitpicks, I know, but it's right. like little stuff like that. And I'm right. like, no one saw this big-ass sub in the middle of this Hawaiian jungle, and no one saw this big-ass Muto bust out the back of this mountain and head toward <laughs> Vegas either when there's all this military activity around it. Crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but basically, uh, we go from uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. He is, I think at this point, he's in Hawaii, right? I believe you're right, yeah. Is where we're pretty much going from 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 that point is that he's going to Hawaii. He's trying to get back home to San Francisco. So he goes from Japan to, to Hawaii, Hawaii so he can connect back on a flight to San Francisco. He ends up on a tram outside the airport, Hawaii International Airport. And that's also where Godzilla first shows himself. Mm-hmm. We learn from a little exposition scene on the boat on the way to Hawaii uh, from Dr. Sherzawa, um, kind of Godzilla's origin a little bit. They tried to bomb the shit out of him in the 50s with all the nuclear tests. He was around before that. They those they weren't testing bombs. They were trying to kill Godzilla, ah. apparently. Uh, that's what's uh, that's what the, it's kind of like helped him grow, and, and he is... As Surazawa kind of says it, he is a godlike creature. He is the balance of nature. He's there to set things and keep things within balance. So Muto's running around. Godzilla can't have that. He's got to get the balance back in yes. order. There's no balance if there's Muto's frigging all over the sea. <laughs> you can't have Muto's frigging out Godzilla of California. can't abide that. Mm-mm. Muto frigging, no. No. So, so Godzilla's got to set that ba- <laughs> back in. <laughs> In line, uh, so we ain't go, no Muto friggin' on my, my watch. watch. Exactly. <clears throat> so uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson ends up on a tram headed to the airport in Hawaii. Godzilla 
uh, emerges from the ocean, causing a tidal wave that had to kill thousands. I at mean, least, thousands of people at least, which we'll come back to that point later <laughs> on. So that that causes a tidal wave, kills a, has to kill a bunch of people, and then we go into another problem with this film. So we see the Muto and Godzilla kind of squaring off the airport. We get our first view of Godzilla. Do we see Godzilla and the Muto fight though, Todd? No. No, we cut to it on the TV. The TV, of course. That's what shows us our fight. Yeah. And I get it. It's building anticipation. It's, people say it's clever. I don't know that it's clever. It's not very clever. Yeah. In a movie that, if your human drama was better, I don't want to keep referencing other Godzilla films, but if your human drama was better, maybe it would be different or I'd feel differently. But I don't care about anything else that's going on. I don't care about Ellen, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson having to look after some Asian boy for a scene. Right. He literally, because the story needs him to do something, mm-hmm. he has to like be the savior of this little Asian boy and gives him his G.I. Joe. Yeah. And then he finds his parents in the next scene. There was no point to that, really. He could have been on that train. It got attacked. No need for the little Asian boy. Yeah, I mean, I understand you can't have your major you know, fight scene right then. Right. They could have been a skirmish. They They could have have been something. There could have been something that they, that was shown. But again, like I said, at the time, and and, and I think, you know, people have defended it as being clever and like a little bit of subversion, but it is, it's just very cock teasy. (laughs) (laughs) It still feels that way. It felt like it to me in 2014. I remember that being a problem that I had in it. And it still feels like that a little bit today. Like, he could have done something a little bit more. And I think I feel like that more so because I don't have anything else interesting to watch when Godzilla's not on screen. Right, exactly. Compared to other Godzilla films we've recently seen, I have other interesting things in human drama that I was invested in. I had nothing else interesting to watch when Godzilla was not around. So you, like, tease me by showing him on television monitors and computer screens and things like that. Like, mm, it just doesn't work for me altogether. Exactly. Uh, what else? Where are we gonna go? What are we gonna talk about next time? Uh, there was a couple of things. Well, actually, I did a little. Uh, I did a little timey thing. Okay. I think the movie clocked in at around two o three, two o two, two o three. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla's first appearance was about an hour in. This is Hawaii, right? Yeah. Yeah. He made landfall in San Francisco at about an hour thirty in. Then I just put tease, 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 tease. <laughs> <laughs> Final confrontation, maybe, maybe, really begins in full at almost one hour and 45 to one hour and 50 minutes in. In a movie that's only two hours and three minutes long. Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> I could be wrong. I think Godzilla is in the film for 11 minutes. Yeah. I think, if I'm not mistaken. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about designs. What, let's start with Mudos. Can we see them first? What do you think about the designs of the Mudos? Uh, they look kind of, I don't know, it's like big overgrown bugs. Yeah, I got, <laughs> I got some like behind the scenes stuff. There's a lot of inspiration. One of those being um, Starship Troopers. Oh, okay. You, see, you can see definitely that see. It's definitely, yeah. yeah, you can definitely see their design. They're, they're serviceable. They're not. They feel the role. Yeah. That's all I'll give them. I, I think they were scared to use someone major like a Ghidorah or somebody. I right. think they didn't want to do that. I think they just wanted to have something generic for Godzilla to bat around a little bit. And in that case, they're, yeah, in that case, they're, they're serviceable. Uh, what do you, what about Godzilla's design? Who Godzilla thick. He's <laughs> tall and thick. He is <laughs> tall and thick, which again, I don't mind. Uh, let's let me let me cut coming you off. off of ninety eight though. I I I really was at the time like, hey, this is at least close to what he should be. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. He's got a very uh, again. I got some more kind of inspiration in a little bit like uh, about his design, but he's got a very animalistic face. He's got that more of that drawn out snout. Right. There's like I think they said there's some bear designs and things like that. He is very mm. bear like. Yeah, he's kind of like big and brawlish or whatever. It works. I don't mind the design I at all. I think all. I think for the time, and I think it still stands up. Is it my number one Godzilla design? No, no. but it's probably up in the top. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for this, like I think I it think works. the design works. Uh, uh, we talked about how big Zilla was last week. Zilla ninety eight Godzilla was two hundred twenty nine feet tall. 
This Godzilla is 354 feet tall. Yeah. I don't know if he's the biggest Godzilla. I should have looked that up, but he's got to be up there. He's got to be close. Um, the Empire State Building, for reference, is 1,250 feet tall, and the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet tall. That was a criticism. We had a Zilla not being as tall as the Empire State Building. This Godzilla is almost uh, you know 55, uh, 50 feet bigger than the Empire go. State Building. Take that, Zilla. Or the Statue of Liberty, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, so I think size-wise, I think scale, I think everything works here. Compared to Zilla 98, there was a lot of scale issues, Mm -hmm. a lot of changing. I think everything's very consistent. Gareth Edwards is, you know, the director of this film. He does a great job with scale. Uh, He was coming off the back of a movie called Monsters, which was very much a human drama set with a backdrop of, like, big kaiju action. And there was a lot of good scale and use of scale there. And it's, it's, uh, it's... carried over into this film, and we see it too. He does a great job with that in like the something we saw recently, The Crater. He does yep. a very good job. Visually, great-looking film. Mm-hmm. No problem visually at all no. with anything. The no. effects are good. The effects are, are good. There's no real cringy stuff. Um, uh, there will be – there are other better effect Godzilla films – that currently live now. Yes, that's not, current. Not, not the, not Very the key. current. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wink, wink. Go see it. <laughs> um, but you know, it's definitely, it's definitely solid. The effects are definitely, definitely solid here. So there's not cinematography is great. I know there was a lot of um, talk about when this movie came out on home video. I didn't research as much, but I do remember it. People were complaining about it being too dark in places. Apparently there was some kind of issue with the transfer of the film at oh. one point where, and they just never went back and fixed it like they okay. could have, but they didn't. So there was always a little bit of controversy. When I rewatched it, I rewatched a digital copy through iTunes. Mm-hmm. Didn't see any problems with that. What about you? I also watched a digital copy through uh, Vudu, and I didn't really notice anything overly dark. Right, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. I think everything looked fine. I just remember like a lot of like kind of controversy about it as it yeah. kind of like when it come out maybe originally and then definitely when it was a home on home video. Um, let's see. So basically, let's put our let's put our, our plan in here. So the 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 American military decides that the only thing that it can do in times like these is what it always decides it can do. Nuke drop a nuke on the problem. <laughs> Got to drop a nuke. So they 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 first try to transport a nuke by train. The Mutos destroy that train, uh, and then we learn that's where we first see that the female Muto is pregnant, uh, as we alluded to before. They secure that nuke once again, and then the plan that they have is to lure all three kaijus to a convergence point 20 miles offshore of San Francisco, try to kill all of them. One of the soldiers says, three birds, one stone, right? So that's the plan. Uh, the day of that, um, we see a really, really good scene I actually like on the bridge. Yes, that the was The very good. good bridge scene in San Francisco. I actually really like that. It's kind of set in the rain. Godzilla kind of going under the boats and kind of displacing them and coming out the other side really mm. good. Everything about that scene works for me except the bus driver thing. Right, right. It's, it's like one of those, like, the bus driver is like, I'm out of here. Fuck this. <laughs> I'm two days from a time. Like that kind of thing. Like he just takes off. Yeah. Or like, uh, Did you notice? I think I have it in my notes later. So I mentioned before Elizabeth Olsen, she just passes her kid off to some lady that works at the hospital right, to right. take him to a shelter. She's on that's the same bus. But when you see inside that bus, there's clearly no other adults on that bus. It's just them children. Ah. Did that lady abandon that kid? Did she abandon him too? I think so. Wow. <laughs> it's in my notes that later. Poor kid. Yeah, but uh, that kid pretty much got abandoned by not only his mother, but the person that was supposed to be watching out for him. Because there's no other adults on Damn. that bus. You can clearly see. Um so the male Mudo, he attacks the boat and steals the nuke back. He goes and takes it and presents it to the female. Like, did I do good? Look what I got for you. And, of course, like most women, she was unimpressed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she burrows underground, uh, basically to, I guess, hatch her eggs or whatever. We learn that uh, military man Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, Brody, he's the only EOD tech to survive the train attack. Huh. How convenient. How about that? How convenient. The American military has no other EOD They only got one EOD guy with a nukes around, yeah. mind you. <laughs> and conveniently, he was the one that uh, armed or did something else to the nuke before. So he right. he's familiar with said nuke. Ah. He's familiar with said nuke. I, I read something, too, about this film. Um, uh, the American military, the Army branch of the military, was uh, was unhappy with Godzilla 1998 and their maybe their their uh, depiction in it. So the American Army refused to kind of do business with this one oh. because of that. So that's where the Navy stepped in. Okay. So this is Navy 
Oh, not Arnold. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Man, that's if okay. I was involved with Godzilla ninety eight, I wouldn't want anything else to do with anything <laughs> either. Um, we get a scene between uh, the Navy Admiral Captain, whatever he is. We get a scene with him and Ken Watanabe, or let them fight scene. Yeah. Which is what this movie should have just been is a lot of just letting them just fight. Let them fight. But you didn't let them fight for most of the movie. You get let them fight for like ten minutes later on. <laughs> um. Halo jump scene. What would you think of it? I actually uh, had a little note here that I felt like the train sequence and that jump sequence could have been scrapped completely. Right. I felt like that train sequence, and when I say train sequence, I mean where that train gets attacked. You mean you the, know, the Hawaii one, or you mean the, the nuke one where the Mutos steal the nuke? Or well, the Mutos steals the nuke, yeah, that one. Not the Hawaii one with gotcha. the little kid, but the one where the Mutos steals mm. the nuke. I feel like that could have been a something the guy told the general off of a computer screen. Yeah. General, we just lost that nuke to a Muto. We lost the train nuke, yeah. whatever. That could have gave you more monster action. Yeah. I mean, that jump sequence was cool. Getting to see him kind of fall past the monsters as they're fighting. Could have done without it. Yeah, or if, if you don't cut that train scene, maybe have that as like another uh, where Godzilla and the, the Muto are actually fighting. Have them fight there. And yeah. and that's what causes the train to derail or something like that. And that gives you another little Godzilla action scene. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty use, useless. Yeah. You could have that kind of, you could have some expository dialogue and do that. The Halo jump scene, I agree with you. It's I like it. It's just because it's visually it's visually Different. appealing. Yeah, it's yeah. visually appealing. It looks great. I think they use uh, the soundtrack for that scene is is, is fantastic. I think it, it's because it's music from uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure, which is what adds to it. It it's a good little scene, but is it is it needed? No, not yeah. really. Like I think, but visually, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and what did you think about the, the scene ahead. where, uh, you know, Elizabeth Olsen, she's going underground with the rest of those survivors. Another tease. Here comes the fight. It's happening now, Cody. Yeah. The fight's going to happen right now. No. We're no. shutting the door. Yeah. Door <laughs> shut. yeah. Another, it's just, it's a lot of that. And some people argue it's building anticipation. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the Godzilla version of, <laughs> yeah, it's the Godzilla version of edging Todd is what this is. Whatever. Like it's, uh, it's what it is. And I mean, I get some people may like it and I'm not saying I get it stylistically, but again, the problem is I don't have anything else interesting to watch. Yeah. I mean, That's if the problem. Something interesting happening to keep us from the fight. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. At if I was point, invested you're just, you're in making me mad. Yeah, if I was <laughs> if I was invested in what Elizabeth Olsen was doing in that shelter or Aaron Taylor Johnson, you know, disarming a nuke, if I was interested in any of that or I cared about those characters or what happened to them, it would be a different story, but I don't. Um, so again, we talked about the Muto, the female Muto, she kind of burned in to hatch her eggs or those spores. Uh Quicksilver, he can't have that. <laughs> so he's he uh he sets them on fire. Uh, that helps break up the double team the Mudos have going on Godzilla uh, long enough for him to fire off his atomic breath. So that's something we should talk about. I really do like the depiction of the atomic breath here. The the kind of rev up sound that it has. That that's really good. The, the visually, it looks good. It looked amazing. Yeah, the first time he fires it off, it's really good. It's pretty effective. Again, not as good as some of the uh, atomic breath we've seen in recent Godzilla films. Ting. Ting. <laughs> um, but still pretty good uh, depiction. Um, so the military have possession of the nuke again. They go to load it on another boat. Uh, Godzilla <laughs> Godzilla kills the male Muto with a really perfectly timed tail whip into the building. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was watching that and I'm like, I don't that didn't kill him. I was he like, was I think was I, I was like, I don't remember him dying this way. I think he's probably gonna come back, right? Nah, he did. He did. He did. I just really thought I was like something in, in me. I was like, I remember this thing coming back again. But no, it's not. He he gets slapped in that building pretty hard, and <laughs> he he's don't. done. Uh, and then the the skyscraper ends up falling on Godzilla, and then uh, him and ATJ hap- he happens to be fall on the street right where ATJ is, and they have a little like. We still got work to do, big guy. Look, yeah. like stare down <laughs> in the middle. Of the, we still got work to do. Me and you. Uh, they've already frigged. <laughs> we, we got. <laughs> you let me down on the frigging Godzilla. Now we gotta, we gotta put this, we gotta put this right, okay? Um, so, <laughs> uh, so uh, Miss Muto, she kills the soldiers near the boat that are loading the nuke on there. Quicksilver, he manages to crank it up, send it out to sea, 
he saved uh, from Miss Muto at the last second by Godzilla in the coolest part of the movie. Yeah. You know, and still, if you look at that last fight, it's still so broken up. Mm-hmm. We were talking about in it's other... Very choppy. Yes, we were talking about other Godzilla films recently, <laughs> Wink, that doesn't do that. Like the the human drama is the is playing out with Godzilla. Mm-hmm. This it's a lot of Godzilla human, Godzilla human, and it's not interesting. Right. It doesn't it doesn't all come together the way like if it was more I don't know smartly written written or creatively done. It's a lot of just cutting away from Godzilla, and Godzilla is like not he should be the focus at that point. Like yeah. we need to resolve some stuff I think, and then have our fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, let let the fight just happen and breathe and be its own thing. Yeah. Quit it's, cutting away from it at yeah, this point. Yeah, exactly. But it is the coolest part of the movie. Godzilla takes Miss Mudo, he bites her neck, but then he pulls her around, opens up her mouth, atomic breath, straight down the gullet until yeah. her freaking head comes off. Awesome. And it is very awesome. I, I cannot take it away. The, the times Godzilla is actually fighting in this film – Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Too, but too bad there's not enough of That's it. That's right. Too bad there's not enough of it. Um, Ford is rescued uh, by helicopter, and the nuke detonates safely at sea, and we see Godzilla laying dead in the middle of the city. Right, Todd? Not so not. much. Godzilla can't die yeah. in a movie. Yeah, we see. Uh, you know, on the on the Channel Three News, they've got in there on their on their bottom, King of the Monsters dash Savior of our city question mark. No, <laughs> not really. Technically, yes, but not really in the spirit of it. No. No. What about Hawaii? Yeah. People die. Tell that to the people of Hawaii. He probably squashed 12,000 more people that were still <laughs> left in that city. He probably killed six guys stepping out back into the water <laughs> when he was leaving at the oh. end. Is he the savior? No. Yeah. King of the monsters? Perhaps. Perhaps. Right? But... Savior, no. I don't see him as the savior. No. Uh, balance, okay. Savior, yeah. no. No, I didn't. Technically, okay, Channel yeah. 3. Just just calm down. Calm your tits, Channel you 3. You sensational story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fake news. Um, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, they're reunited with their son, Lil Vision. At the, <laughs> sta- <laughs> okay. at the stadium. <laughs> and everyone lives happily ever after, Todd. Ting. Ting. Uh, so before we go on to final thoughts and everything, I got some Godzilla goofs here for you, Todd. All right. Uh, during the battle between Godzilla and the two Mutos, uh, many of the San Francisco skyscrapers, such as the Grand Hyatt Hotel, are destroyed multiple times, then reappear after their collapse. How about that? I felt it was only fair to include this since we shit on Godzilla 98 for doing the same thing. Exactly. When Godzilla swims under the bridge, he is able to swim under the boats. When he stands up in the water, it comes to about his knees. The level of the water in the second shot would have been too shallow for him to Submerged completely. Ah. When Ale puts Sam on the bus at the hospital, her co worker is in front of the seat and promises to take care of him. This is what I was mentioning before. Later, when the bus is stopped on the bridge because of the military operation, Sam is sitting near the window midway in the bus and in the opposite side of where Ale's co worker had been seated. In the following frames, you can see there are no other adults in the bus other than the driver. That child was abandoned. Again. Factual error here. Captain Hampton informs Dr. Sarazawa. Uh, that the nuclear warhead that would uh, they would be using had a yield of megatons, not kilotons, and that by comparison, the 1954 explosion to kill the Muto would be like a firecracker. However, as shown in the film's intro, the 1954 explosion was the Castle Bravo nuclear test. This thermonuclear explosion had a yield of some 15 megatons, still the largest ever detonated by the U.S. The modern nuclear device would be the one be the small one by comparison. Merk. <laughs> factual error because error is America uh, another factual error here the soldiers in the film armed the nuclear warhead by using the standard two man simultaneous key turn method you remember that oh man unlike actually uh, other arming at mechanism the locks in the film are close enough that one man with both keys could easily turn them both <laughs> <laughs> why uh, I got some Godzilla bits, too. You want some bits of Godzilla, uh, too, Todd? I have a little bits of Godzilla, yeah. Godzilla is covered in uh, keloid scars, raised thick patches of skin. The original Godzilla 1954 was heavily scarred to evoke the gruesome marks borne by the survivors of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. The United States Marine Corps declined to participate after the experience on the 1998 TriStar film. The United States Navy cooperated with the 2014 production. Okay. 
Dr. Ishiro Shirozawa was named after Ishiro Honda, director of Godzilla 1954, and Dr. Daisuke Shirozawa, one of its main characters. So nice little uh, throwback the there. Original. I mentioned before, the music in the background during the Halo jump is from uh, a 2001 Space Odyssey. It's called Requiem. Godzilla was originally planned to be found preserved in a Siberian glacier. This was changed when the filmmakers saw that Man of Steel 2013 had a similar scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> According to Brian Cranston, Gareth Edwards is inspired by Jaws. The film does not immediately show the beast, but rather builds up to its appearance. While still delivering an eerie and terrifying off screen presence, the Brody family is named after Jaws' protagonist. Wow. Now, this says it, it builds up and before it shows the appearance. Yes, technically true. Jaws is about a shark under the water. Right. That's part of the fear of the ocean is not being able to see. What's in Godzilla's the water? walking fucking upright <laughs> in cities, okay? It's not like Jaws. Not at all like Jaws. <laughs> Gareth Edwards and the design group reviewed all the previous incarnations of Godzilla's design for inspiration of its final design. The way I tried to view it was, imagine Godzilla was a real creature creature, and someone from Toho saw him in the 1950s and ran back to the studio to make a movie about the creature and was trying his best to remember and draw it. And in our film, you get to see him for real. It was important that this felt like a Toho Godzilla. In ways, I think it does, but in other ways, it don't. Yeah, it's it's kinda, a mix. It's, it's a mix. It's an Americanized version that's pretty do, pretty good. Yeah, the Muto design was inspired by King Kong, nineteen eighty three, Alien, nineteen uh, seventy nine, Jurassic Park, nineteen ninety three, and Starship Trooper from ninety seven. So that's what we talked about a little bit. At Starship Trooper design, you get a little Alien Xenomorph there, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Despite being the title character, Godzilla appears in the film after nearly one hour, as you mentioned, and is only in the film for 11 minutes. So I was right. God mighty. According to Gareth Edwards, Godzilla's design is inspired by bears and Komodo dragons. In particular, his face is influenced by the heads of bears, dogs, and eagles. Edwards says the eagle has a lot of nobility. It made him feel very majestic and noble. Ah. And finally, Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen played husband and wife. A year later, they played brother and sister in Avengers Age of Ultron. Hey, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, all right, Todd, ready to go on to reviews? Let's do it. We uh, rank films on a 1 to 10 scale. Starting from 1, the ranks are torture, 2 awful, 3 bad, 4 subpar, 5 mediocre, 6 decent, 7 good, 8 great, 9 amazing, 10 masterpiece, Todd, give us any final thoughts you have and your review score for Godzilla 2014. Uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, the human element can a lot of times detract from what we've really come to see, which is Godzilla himself or the monster or monsters he's battling. Uh, in this film, the human element, in my opinion, uh, human story in general, almost hijacks the entire film. Uh, Godzilla looks great here. I think we're on the right track, but unfortunately I think we stall a lot more than we soar. I give Godzilla 2014 a six, which on our scale is decent. Gotcha. Uh, I know if you if you've been watching this and you've been, if you stuck around to this point, I, maybe it sounds like I've been shitting on this movie a lot, and perhaps I have. I don't hate it. I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it has some problems. Like Todd said, the human element of this film really lets it down, and that kind of exacerbates the problem of Godzilla not being in it enough when you don't have strong human characters can, to connect you to the story. But, again, I don't think this is a bad film. I think it's a fairly decent film. I think there's diminishing returns for the rest of the MonsterVerse as we go through. Maybe we'll talk about some of those one day. Uh, for me, I was a little bit more generous. I give Godzilla 2014 7 flying Godzilla drop kicks out of 10, hmm. which ranks it as good. Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. Uh, we are at Tao Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tao Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at talcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys. <laughs>